This is April 14th, the second part of a, a vlog video that I made on my birthday and the way back from the office seeing a couple of emergency patients. First patient was a, an anterior tooth that you saw in the previous video of how I handled it. They ended up putting calcium hydroxide in there because of continuous drainage. Here in the second case that I did on this uh, patient, it was a tooth number three. So this patient uh, was diagnosed with uh, uh, necrotic pulp and acute apical periodontitis, which was on tooth number three. And after pulp vitality testing, it was showing that this tooth was non-responsive to the cold and was positive for percussion. Now, a CBCT was also taken, again as usual, in order to uh, determine what kind of anatomy we have, which showed to be about three canals, although a little bit oval uh, on the mesial buckle, which kind of makes sense. And the apex on this particular tooth, based on the CBCT, was showing a little bit of abnormality and so as a result was kind of expecting something to be there. So uh, we got this started and the patient uh, was anesthetized with a PSA and some buccal infiltration. There was a little bit of swelling but tremendous amount of pain. So anyway we, we got started access through the tooth through the crown once again having them shield on and uh, at this particular time I also put up a patient apron, taped it to the bottom of the shield to just give my neck a little more protection because I found in the previous patient I wasn't getting enough protection from the neck. And then we uh, kind of got started with the access preparation through the crown using the um, Dura Cut Bar from the Rebuild Endo Access Kit to get through this crown as efficiently as possible, yet as safely as possible. As you know, some of these crowns, they need to be adequately cooled. And at the same time, you have to make sure that your preparation is pretty slow so you don't end up potentially cracking or causing craze lines in this tooth. And this crown was relatively new. It was only a couple of years old, although it looked like the margins were not quite as well cemented. So that's something to kind of address and take care of in the follow-up with the patient. And then what we um, did is uh, get, get inside the tooth. A little bit difficult to see again with the shield and so on, looking for the MB2, although I knew from the CBCT that it was going to be an oval canal and there was something going on at the apex. So what I did is I got inside the tooth and at this point, as I told you guys before in a previous video, my philosophy is kind of changed now, for the time being at least, to make sure that I use uh, a little bit larger taper and larger access preparations in order to facilitate both the instrumentation and the irrigation as well as the obturation of these uh, emergency patients under the current circumstances in which time and speed are of essence and we can't afford to be too uh, fancy and take too long getting these cases. So the canals were identified and uh, again, the combination of using the 06 taper files, which I will do a tutorial on the exact technique of how to do these, I managed to get down using the only sizes uh, 15, 20, and 2506. And then at the very end, because I knew the apical diameter would have probably been a little bit larger, I used the 3D shaper, the uh, size, the 30 3D shaper, to make sure that I do get a little bit more cleaning in those areas, because again, time is of essence. What I'm doing between the instrumentation, also I'm using the ultrasonic and lots of volume of water to wash out any of the debris that's been cut, as well as using hypochlorite with negative pressure as well as positive pressure to clean up and uh, remove the debris. This is the way I can achieve the fastest and the most efficient results for this type of instrumentation. And so it was like this, uh, that you know, we got down to all the other roots and all of these three main canals with the oval mesial buckle. But I knew from the CBCT that there was going to be some type of a weird apical anatomy around the mesial buckle root. So I wanted to make sure that I haven't missed any anatomy. And what I did, because I could feel a little bit of a step while instrumenting with the 06 taper files, I took a size a 10 hand file and put a nice little J-shaped hook on it and started to navigating at the apical area where I could feel a little catch and I managed to actually get into some type of anatomy that I could feel just by manual dexterity, but without knowing where it was. I knew it was off the main path because of the resistance that I could feel from the, uh, uh, the canal. Oh my God, it is hard to believe. It is actually April 18th, it's me from the future. I had to cut in the video at this point. First, to show you how crazy it is just in a few days. Take a look, it's actually snowing. On April 18th in Boston, it is snowing and the snow coming on the ground. It was just like showing you the dogwoods on the way coming here. The second reason, unfortunately, is uh, to say that here at this point of the video where I talk about the latter end of the instrumentation and the scouting of the canal, unfortunately, the uh, video went out on my uh, scope video because of the fact that I kind of ran out of battery. You know, part of the reason for covering the uh, whole uh, microscope now with all this plastic, so for infection control is I couldn't see that the battery was low and the, that last part of the footage due to the battery was lost. 
lost. So I, until I realized and I have to change the battery, I could have lost that last piece where I scout the canal uh, with a pre-bent instrument, which is very important actually. I, I'm gonna see in a second in the final x-ray, it shows how that little area that it scouted was filled with using this warm uh, vertical condensation. Anyway, I wanted to just get a quick cut out, show you that it's actually crazy snowing here in Boston on April 18th. So now let's get back to April 14th. So once that was uh, done, I managed to get into a little additional area that I could feel on the mesiobuckle canal. I was ready to dry the canals and after drying, couldn't see any more drainage or anything coming out on this tooth. So I decided to fit all on one visit using the BC uh, high flow. Once again, put it on with the uh, minimal waist tips and the fitted cones that I had a radiograph from that looked like they were exactly where I wanted them to be were then coated and each seated and filled. Now on the mesial buckle, because I knew there was something that I was catching with my instrument and I wanted to have a little bit more hydraulics than the conventional hydraulic condensation could provide, what I did is I did a little bit of warm hydraulic condensation, which means that I kind of condense it down using the, uh, the heat source to about four millimeters or so from uh, the RF four or five millimeters and now the question becomes one of what is the best way to fill this uh, kind of a space that I've created so you traditionally what you would be using you'd be using uh, gutta percha and a thermoplastic gun kind of a technique and what I decided to do here is to first wash out it's something that I do and in fact I had created a few videos to talk to you guys about it but I didn't get a chance to really do that but what I ended up doing is I washed out all the excess sealer on the walls of the preparation and so on and I also etched the tooth and once the tooth was etched and everything was uh, cleaned out what I did is I uh, ended up um, backfilling that space with just BC sealer using the middle waist tip so in a sense what I was using I was using the BC sealer high flow here as a backfill material now what you may say is that well if that's going to be all BC sealer is it going to be easy to retreat well if it's only going to be a four or five millimeter segment it's not going to be too difficult to get through using ultrasonics. But if you end up obviously filling the whole canal with it, it would be difficult. So the goal becomes, if something like that is needed to be retreated, you just go through the four millimeter of uh, BC sealer with your ultrasonic, and then you get to get a perch and you retreat it conventionally. Anyway, so I did that. And then immediately after I put the BC liner on top of it and filled up bulk to the top so that the case was all done. And here in the post-op x-ray, as you can see, we have a preparation that we filled to the end of the roots. And you can see that little bifurcation, which I could manually feel, and I kind of had an idea about looking at the CT filled with just the BC sealer. That's basically it. That's the case I want to share with you. The second case that I did today on the emergency. So anyway, that case is done too. I'm getting uh, approaching home here. I gotta get in. Just uh, wanted to let you know, you know, emergency patients, even during the COVID crisis, as long as you covered yourself pretty well, you are going to be fine. We've had universal precautions for a long time. Obviously, if you don't have a 95 mask, you don't have shields, you don't have the proper PPE, you should stay away from treating patients. But once you have adequate PPE and you understand the basis of this kind of infection, you are going to be in good shape, guys. Don't be afraid. This is not a uh, cataclysmic or an extinction event type of a virus. This is just something that's a uh, you know, a multiple fold worse than the flu, but we were never afraid of the flu before. So even though this thing could be four times, five times worse than the flu in terms of the uh, case fatality rate, we're still gonna be out there and practicing and uh, we're gonna need to make the most of it. So put the fear away, practice from leadership and with understanding and good conscience and good ethics to yourself, to your patients and to your staff and to your families. Love you guys all, have a good one. See you in the next video.